It's just so bright. I've just been transported into the 21st century, guys. Seriously, I've got two soft boxes, and I've got this new camera that I'm using, the ATD, and I don't have my microphone yet, but it just looks amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. So my name is Amina, and as you can tell, I'm using a new camera, which is why I'm super excited to film this video. And I've got all the details down below for my production setup. I post every Mondays and Thursdays at 4 p.m. GMT, so UK time. But um, I also might post a bonus video here or there. And shh, I'm also planning December vlogs slash videos every single day so I yes I'm giving myself that challenge and I've said it out loud now so it's gonna have to happen a video every single day in the month of December so look forward to that I've got loads of informative series coming up that hopefully will help you write essays better and apply for universities better and plan for postgraduate degrees and things like that so hopefully you are able to gain something from that so don't forget to press the subscribe button and let's get started into today's video so I'm going to be talking about the different apps that I was using and I found so beneficial during my PhD. All of the apps that I have, I've got them written down over here, they are all open source and they're all free as well so that's great because you know students we don't have the money to spend hundreds of pounds on software but they honestly are just as good as the paid versions so I highly recommend them and I think they just they're, they're honestly just my holy grail, like throughout my PhD, throughout my masters, I was constantly using them and they helped me in every aspect, so from the reading, from the researching, from the writing, the thesis, uh, just everything, like these apps really, really do help with productivity. They just supplement your life overall and they just really, really help academically. The first app that I would recommend is Mendeley. Now this is such an amazing referencing tool that I use from, I would say, yeah, from my masters all the way through to my PhD, I use it right to the end. So I've probably been with it for like five or six years and it's just been so, so useful and really helpful to help me record all the papers that I've been using to save them offline, to read on the tube and also to reference. If you use Word, you've got a plugin where you can just simply insert references straight from Mendeley. So you don't have to like copy and paste, etc. And the nice thing about that is when you delete a reference, you can also refresh that on Mendeley and it kind of is just in sync. And it's just a great resource to be able to have all your references in one place. It's totally free, which who doesn't love that? I was traveling an hour to get to university, over an hour sometimes. Um, so what I did was I had the Mendeley app on my iPad and I would download papers that I was interested in to read offline. So I'd download them as a PDF on my iPad um, on the Mendeley app so it doesn't take any space on your actual iPad. And then when I was on the tube, I would just read the papers and highlight and make notes as I go along. Now this helped me so much because when it came to actually writing my thesis and my dissertation at the end of my masters, I had collated all of the papers that I was really interested in. And I didn't have to spend hours and hours going through papers and trying to find things that I remember that I read, but I don't know where I read them from. So this was so helpful to be able to just have everything on this one app um, and I could see exactly the date that I downloaded it and I could see all the notes that I made and I think it's probably the most useful app that I used during my PhD so I'd highly recommend it. As an alternative you can also use EndNote but EndNote is a paid, I believe it's paid, don't quote me on that. EndNote is paid. I feel like it was a little bit more complex, I tried to get into it but I just thought I can't be bothered, Mendeley is doing the job for me. And it was perfectly fine for my whole PhD as well considering I had, I think I had about 400 references so it was totally fine for a whole PhD thesis. The second app that I would recommend is Microsoft Office or Google Documents. So it depends on kind of what you are more comfortable with. Personally, I use Microsoft Office for the production of my thesis and for writing. And like I said, I think it was just easier because of two things. Firstly, I, you know, I grew up with Microsoft Word, so it was just the easiest thing to just continue using that and not having to learn something else. And the second thing is because I loved using Mendeley and it was just so much easier to just it was just easy to transition the Mendeley information that I had and the references into Word using the plugins. I guess I was lazy and I went for the easy option. There are other document production apps that you can use, such as Latex, which a few of my friends in the lab used, but they kind of had more formulas and more kind of graphs and more technical data, which apparently it's better for, so they use Latex. One preface that I'll give you before going on to Latex is that not everyone has Latex, obviously, so make sure that you do check with your supervisor that he or she is okay editing your thesis on Latex. Um, my supervisor was fine either way, but I know that other supervisors may not be comfortable using Latex, so do check that before you start writing your whole thesis on Latex, and then 
um, it gets a bit awkward later on. So the third app that I wanted to mention is Inkspace. Now if you are someone like me who produced a lot of kind of graphical data and bar charts and um, western blocks, I would recommend using Inkscape as a desktop app in order to process your images and to make those really nice kind of images that you find in papers with your numbers and all the information and with a legend and to be able to annotate things and put asterisks in places. I think it's just really, really neat. Essentially it's a graphical software that can be used for illustrations. Previously I was using Microsoft PowerPoint in order to just like put things in the right order and I think my supervisor said mentioned Inkscape and I never looked back. I just, I just never look back. The other thing that I like about Inkscape is that you can either save your image as a PDF, which is what I did when I had finalised it, or you can save it in the Inkscape format. Now, I kind of kept it in both, so I would leave every single image that I processed in Inkscape, but also in PDF, because if you do wish to edit your images later on, I think it's really important to leave your image in Inkscape format, so you can just go back and just continue editing on it, as opposed to just saving it as a PDF, just in case you need to go back, which you think you think you won't, but you always have to keep going back and editing it, even after you've done the final version. So you end up with like 10 final, final, final versions. <laughs> um, so I think it's really important to leave your image in the Inkscape format to allow you to go back and edit it much quicker and much easier. The fourth app that I wanted to mention is called Ghost Writer. I only discovered it towards the end of my PhD and I regretted not discovering it earlier. It's such a useful app, it's something that everyone needs but doesn't realise they actually need it. It allows you to work distraction free, so it kind of takes away all of the, you know, all of the elements of a document page that you have that might cause you to be distracted. There's just nothing around to bother you and to distract your mind and take you away from looking at what you're actually writing. It has a few cool settings that I thought I'll quickly touch upon. The first setting that it has is it allows you to focus on certain sentences, so instead of looking at the whole page and the whole bit of writing in one go, you can just focus on a little bit. The second thing that's quite nice is it has your session stats. So it tells you how many times you've edited it, how long you've spent on it, how many words, how many characters, how many spaces you have, how long you've been idle, so how long have you just been sitting there with the page open. Um, all of these stats I think it's quite useful because it does help you with, well number one, word count is really really crucial, um, but secondly it just lets you know kind of like how long are you working on this thing, like do you need to spend this long on it. And the third thing that's really cool is it has the Hemingway mode. Hemingway, Heming, I can't say it. Hemingway. <laughs> a Hemingway mode is when you don't have a backspace key or a delete key. Essentially, what it's trying to make you do is trying to emphasize the importance of just writing and taking away the editing element of it. So you just write a first copy without stopping, and then when you go back, you can then go and delete and edit. I don't know about you guys, but I find that when I was editing my thesis and I was writing it, I would do a paragraph and spend so long pondering upon that paragraph when I could have just continued and gone back to it later. It's really frustrating because all you want to do is edit and delete and get rid of something, but I think it's quite cool because it does allow your creative juices to just flow without having that kind of critical voice in the back of your mind that's saying, ooh, that doesn't sound quite right. So I did, I do really enjoy that feature. So my fifth um, app is ImageJ, or also called Fiji. So Fiji has a few more plugins than ImageJ, but essentially it's kind of the same thing. If in your research you're dealing with lots of blots or graphs or anything quite technical where you have to kind of open an image and analyse it, this is really cool because it does allow you to change the colours, the settings, the brightness, exposure, things like that, and allows you to look at your images in much more detail. Fiji has a plugin where you can convert the videos that you acquire from a microscope. I was acquiring time-lapse videos on a microscope overnight, and the format of that was not something I could open in any other way. So I had to go through Fiji, use a plugin, and open it in that way. I pretty much used it in every single avenue during my research. Another similar one that I could kind of like compare it to is Origin, although it's only available on Windows, I believe, so I couldn't really use it during my PhD. When I was in a lab that had desktops during my masters, I was able to use it and it was really useful. It's the sixth one, and this should actually be higher up on my list, but it's Dropbox or it's Google Drive, anywhere that you can back up your work. Now I use Dropbox, so I pretty much use Dropbox as my home folder, and I've got one terabyte, so I've upgraded mine, but you can use the free version and have like a certain amount. Now it's so, I cannot emphasize how important this is. I, act, I cannot emphasize how important it is to constantly save your work. I mean, every word that you do is 
it's crucial that you save your work. So many occasions where a friend of mine has lost all her work and it's just so devastating. One hour on a thesis can be, you know, pages and pages. It can be edits and edits. And to have wasted all that time just because you haven't saved your work, I think it's really, it's, it's really devastating. I've got Dropbox on my desktop, in, on my laptop, and I can just open it from my home folder and go, get all my work from there. And I think it auto-saves every couple of minutes, so I never lose work. And thank God I've never lost any work in my life so far. I really put it down to being overly paranoid and having OCD over saving things and having five different versions all over the place. And I think it's so important to make sure that you have somewhere that you're saving your work all the time. The seventh app that I wanted to mention is GIMP. So it's pretty much Adobe Photoshop, but a free version. It's an open source uh, software, so it's totally free. It's pretty much your free Photoshop. It's your Photoshop dupe. And honestly, it works really, really well. I haven't used it in a while, but when I was making the images for my thesis, also for the paper that I'm going to publish, I was using GIMP. You have different layers similar to Photoshop, copy your images, and everything is just so nice and neat. And it just looks super professional as well, and that's what I love about GIMP. And the eighth one, so we're almost at the end, the eighth one is Grammarly. So I'm sure you've seen a Grammarly advert, might have been before this video, who knows, but I'm sure that you've seen a Grammarly advert. Now it is a free software that you can download in order to help you kind of improve your writing. So it can help you with spellings, choosing different words, so synonyms, it can help you with arranging your sentences, and I think it's quite cool. I haven't used it personally, I'll be honest with you, I haven't used it. I would like to praise my own my own writing and I think I'm quite strong in writing English and my proofreading skills are also quite strong like I, I did work as a proofreader but for those that maybe have English as a second language or those that are, are a bit weaker in their English I highly recommend this like so many PhD students that are excellent researchers and then when they come to write their thesis they really struggle because of the English that they have the kind of level of English that they have to produce is so high so hopefully this will be able to help you and let me know what you think if you have used it before. My last app, but not least, is Todoist. Now this is, I think, the sister of Wonderlist. I've had Wonderlist for about six or seven months now. So since we got married, my husband and I, we have we downloaded Wonderlist and we kind of sync each other's things to do. We have our grocery lists on there and we sync that just so we know what we need to get. I also use it when I go on holiday just to list the things that I need to get as well when I go on holiday and I think it's really useful. So Todoist is a very similar one although I feel like it looks a bit cleaner than Wonderlist. I, I like the way it looks. If you do have Wonderlist you can just take everything onto Todoist very easily and that's what I did as soon as I discovered Todoist. Honestly just a nice way to have a to-do list. It's a really nice way to write everything that you need to do during the day or during that week. You can have different sections, so you can have a thesis section, you can have a research, things that you need to do during that week, results section, etc, etc, and you can, or you can have a personal section for your own personal life, and you can keep track of it. One way of reducing the amount of stress and the amount of pressure that you put on yourself is by eliminating some of those pressures. Now, those to-do lists are not going to disappear, but you can reduce the stress on your brain of thinking about it by just putting it onto a to-do list. I'm a bit more traditional, so I like to write things down, so I write everything that I need to do in a diary. But you are free to use Todoist, I also use it sometimes, although I don't find it the most efficient for myself. I prefer boxes that I can physically tick, <laughs> that gives me satisfaction. I'm pretty sure that I've mentioned all the apps that are holy grails. I mean, there are loads more that I use, but these are the apps that I use pretty much every single day. I'm sure there are loads of others that I missed out. If there, if there are any that would help with referencing, writing, or just general time management, <laughs> then do let me know because I'm sure others would love to know as well. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know if this video was helpful and if you're going to go and download one of the apps that I've linked down below. And don't forget to follow me on social media and my Instagram and my Twitter handle will be there somewhere. Let me know what other videos you want to see from me, whether they're education based or not. And don't forget that I have a video every Monday and Thursday at 4pm UK time. So press the bell button to be reminded of when I post. And have a great day. Bye!